Turkey's national defense firm ASILSAN made the announcement that an attack drone called Bayraktar Akinsi has successfully launched a new laser-guided missile that is believed to be a game-changer. The UAVs are now far more powerful and are much more effective in defense. The ASILSAN LGK-82, that is, laser-guided kit, 82, bombs the target and it is accurately targeted. As Hala Gorgon put it on Twitter, this attack force is certainly a game changer. According to Turkish official media, a drone launched from Korlu airfield in northeastern Turkey fired an aerial weapon at a target at a height of 30,000 feet. Baykar, a Turkish military corporation, has previously stated that it would provide Ukraine with three Bayraktar TB2 unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, free of cost. In just a few days, business leaders and everyday people alike donated funds of all sizes to achieve this milestone. Baycar will not accept payment for the TB2s and will deliver three unmanned aerial vehicles to the Ukrainian battlefront free, the corporation claimed in a tweet. Earlier this week, Turkey's defense industry agent president Ismail Demir stated that his country was extremely careful when it comes to selling weapons to Ukraine. Demir claimed that something is going on when asked if Turkey continues to supply Ukraine with weapons, particularly Bayraktar TB2 drones. With regard to Ukraine's weapons supply, Russia addressed a diplomatic note to all countries in April, in which Sergei Lavrov stated that any container which carries weapons for Ukraine would be considered an acceptable target by Russia. In a claimed response to a request from the separatist regions of Donetsk and Luhansk for the defense because of very intense Ukrainian troop attacks, Russia initiated a military campaign in Ukraine on February 24th. Ukraine launches an attack on Russia. Ukraine seems to have overcome Russian electronic warfare in order to strike against the Russians' drones, especially the Bayraktar TB2 drone, which posed the most significant threat. In an interview with Ukrainian news source Sensort.net, a Ukrainian drone operator named Sergei Hadzinov shared his thoughts on how to dodge Russian electronic warfare and target Russian drone operators. He's a member of Aero Razvidka, or Aerial Intelligence, a civil organization created in 2014 to aid the Ukrainian military with surveillance utilizing consumer drones and has now been recruited into the military. It has been possible to acquire valuable intelligence and support artillery operations with consumer drones, particularly those made by the Chinese company DJI during the Russia-Ukraine war. Despite the fact that Chinese drones are being used by both sides, Ukraine has accused the Chinese corporation of collaborating with Russia in order to swiftly discover UAV communication links and obtain real-time data such as flight status and routes, DGI sells Aeroscope, a complete drone detection tool. Artillery may now strike drones and their operators thanks to the system's detection of both. A fighter drone operator tells CNN that the Chinese have offered the Russians a system that can spot us out. They know where we are coming from and where we're going. There was this one time when we attacked so quickly that we were unable to defend ourselves. At that point, the drone was preparing to land and within 30 seconds, a missile strike was about 30 meters away. Ukrainian Deputy Premier Mikhailo Fedorov has already accused DJI of providing Russia with a more advanced version of Aeroscope. According to the company's statement, drones manufactured by the company should not be utilized for military purposes. According to the Ukrainian drone operators in an interview with CNN, they said they wanted to buy U.S.-made drones that won't be spotted by Aeroscope, which would improve their operations and help them target the enemy with accuracy. U.S. drone manufacturer Teal Drones claims to have received an order for 15 Golden Eagle small unmanned aircraft systems from a NATO member country. Drones are on their way to Ukraine thanks to this NATO member state. Russia's electronic warfare looks to have been defeated by Ukraine. Ukraine, and now Ukraine is able to locate and attack Russian drone operators easily. How is Ukraine able to evade detection by Aeroscope? Drones, according to Hadzhenov, include the DJI Mavic 3 and many others. It has a range of 5 miles and weighs less than 2 pounds, allowing it to fly for over 40 minutes on a single battery charge. Hackers have managed to make the Aerorazvidka drones completely invisible to the system. As a result, Hadjanov concluded that Aeroscope no longer presents a problem. According to him, Aeroscope sees what they are doing and does not see what we are doing. 
Commercial drones don't have a new operating system, so we can observe what they're doing and how they're doing it. Russian quadcopter owners, on the other hand, are now at risk because they lack the ability to modify their devices like Aero Razvidka. As Hadjanov put it, we know where their pilots are and we're shooting at them. They're no longer in the air. Hadjanov claims Ukraine has 10 times more drones than the enemy and hence dominates the battleground in terms of small drones. Soldiers from Ukraine have taken to the skies in urban areas to use DJI drones as tactical scouts to locate Russian armored units and set up ambushes with javelins and other weapons. Mavics are employed by sole snipers when heavy artillery guns are unavailable. The Russian Orlan-10 drone fleet, on the other hand, continues to fly. Despite Russia's continued deployment of these drones, several of them have been destroyed by Ukrainian forces. Challenges for Ukraine The threat of Russian electronic warfare is still a major concern. When Hadjanov launched his first three drones, he rapidly lost them all, and his commander told him that the fourth one would be the last. In the future, they monitored other units and learned how these drones stayed alive when radio signals were damaged or obstructed. With no GPS, no radio, and no video signal in the air, flying is a near impossible task, but you have to do it. You won't find any instructions on how to do this on YouTube or the manufacturer's website. Hadjanov says it's unusual for a drone to last longer than a month. Keeping a low profile and avoiding detection are important skills when using jamming systems because they require direct line of sight to the target. In addition, flying at the right time and maintaining tabs on jammers is critical. So, for example, to prevent interfering with Russian drone operators, jammers might be turned off. The signals that jammers create can also be utilized to track down and destroy the actual jammers. Hadjanov claims that his squad will soon be equipped with drones that look like planes and have a much greater range. These will provide him the controls he needs to direct long-range weaponry, such as the recently acquired American HIMARS rocket system, to destroy Russian artillery and other threats. Nevertheless, Ukraine is using consumer drones to their best extent for close-range operations in the war. Ukrainians are now calling their pets after the Bayraktar drone. Bayraktar, the title given to a baby lemur at the Kiev Zoo by Mayor Arseniy Yatsenyuk earlier this year, has been adopted by the Kiev Police Dog Training Facility and the Foreign Ministry. Officials from the West and Ukraine have applauded Turkey's Bayraktar TB2 drones for their role in defending against Russian attacks. Ben Wallace, the British Defense Secretary, reportedly informed UK legislators last month that the drones were delivering bombs into the ground. According to him, the drones are part of the Ukrainian social media operation that is executed extremely well by the Ukrainian military and citizens. It is a huge morale booster and a wonderful tactical triumph when videos of Bayraktar strikes become popular on social media. Ukraine purchased its first TB2 drones in 2019 and has placed at least 36 orders for the aircraft. The arrival of a new batch of drones was announced by the country's military minister last month. Baykar Technologies' chief technical officer, Selkuk Bayraktar, prefers to discuss the drone's technology than discuss the political climate. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan's son-in-law is also an important player in the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. That's all for today, guys. If you liked the video, make sure to press the thumbs up. Also, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for any new updates. See you in the next one.